That's my best invitation of Pastor Clay. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning at Satsuma United Methodist. We are so thankful that we have a beautiful sanctuary, which we know the building is not the church, but we're so thankful for the many blessings that we have. Uh, so welcome this morning to you uh, that are here and to those who may be watching from home. Uh, just a few announcements. As always, you can look in your bulletin, but uh, we have a very special uh, guest to speak today. This is the person behind the man that Clay has become. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Test, tell it like it is, sister. Uh, okay, we're going to, uh, Joy Agape Group is still gathering items. There are a couple of boxes outside to, uh, we're taking things to Ronald McDonald House. And there was a list outside, I don't know if we have any left, but if you need to know what to bring, you just ask me or Sue or Emily or any of, and, and it's just practical things that you need at home, like napkins and paper plates and things like that. Um, there will be no youth this week. You'll begin next week meeting again. Are there any announcements from the congregation? I guess that's all then. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we do come to you this morning with multiple needs and wants and desires and but most of all we come to praise you as pastor clay preached to us last week we thank you for the sabbath we thank you that we can come and be renewed spiritually and mentally and that we can have christian fellowship and lift each other up in prayer lord we just pray that you prepare our hearts right now for the message that you have given to Bobby to bring to us. We just ask that you uh, help us just clear our minds and open our hearts and prepare us for worship, that we can receive the message that you have for us today. And all of God's people said, amen. Good morning to everyone. Would you stand with me as we sing our call to worship today, Our God Range. Would you join me as we sing? into our hymn today. Our first hymn is no one, are you going to do? Okay, that's all right. Y'all hold on a minute. Okay, at this time of our service, you may be seated. Yeah, that's good. Uh, at this part of our service, we want to bring our joys and concerns to the Lord. If you have any prayer requests, uh, this morning specifically that you would like for us to note. Who, who, I didn't hear the second one. Uh-huh. So just continue to remember her in your prayer. 
Praise uh, as, you, as you probably know, Deanie had surgery a couple of weeks ago, and she's in rehab now, so continue to remember her. For sure, Janie and Bob. I saw somebody. What's wrong with Carol? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I talked to her the other day. Boy, that seemed like a long time ago that I talked to her about that. But she was doing good. Okay, I saw somebody. Um, the ones that didn't go to Cancun. Sorry. Okay. Shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Brother Clay's going, raising his hand to pray for me. I apologize. <laughs> we shouldn't say anything political. Any more prayer requests? Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, once again, we bow before you, and we just bring all of these names that were mentioned, Lord. And in addition to these, Lord, I especially pray this morning for those who did not um, acknowledge or raise their hand, but Lord, we, we all have needs, we all have concerns, so I have a special prayer this morning for the unspoken prayers, Lord, that you would um, be with them in a very special way, and Lord, I just pray for each uh, family and friend, circle of friends and families that are represented here today. Lord, we thank you for all of your many blessings. We especially thank you for the Holy Spirit that you've provided that means for us to communicate with you, Lord, till we're called home. And Lord, we once again thank you for all of your blessings. We thank you for being with us. And we know that you are a mighty God. You are a magnificent God. And Lord, it, in all of the trials and all that are going on and all the news that we get each day, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for being the one constant in our lives. And Lord, at this time, we come to you and pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now would you stand with me as we sing our opening hymn, No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. Would you join me as we sing? standing.
you join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. sing a song for you that I haven't done this in a long, long time, but, and it's about the lighthouse, as Jesus being the lighthouse in our lives. This song here is telling a story about that. So we, we uh, nothing else, but we finna just sing that as soon as I can get my cell phone. Okay.
Now we get to the part of the service where we bring our tithes and offerings. We got four ways we can do that. One way is by dropping them in the mail slot on the fellowship hall. Do it on the internet. Uh, well, it's up there so you can read it. Uh, mail to the U.S. mail or give it in person like we're going to do today. Let us pray. Our Father, as we bring our offerings to you, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. May our gifts be acceptable to your sight, O Lord, our God. Blessings and glory, wisdoms and thanksgiving, honor and power and strength be unto our God forever and ever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you stand for the doxology? Today's scripture is from Mark, fourth chapter, verses 35 to 41. On that same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and the other little boats were also with him. And a great wind 
storm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are per perishing? Then he arose, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? The word of God for the people of God. Well, we are blessed this morning to have a spe special preacher this morning, pastor. And uh, we have Miss Bobby Lassiner. Bobby is the wife of Clay Lassiner and the mother to Allison, Hayden, and Kaylin. Before, we before she started in the minister, she was a high school math teacher. She graduated from Florida State, uh, Florida State University. She's also alumni of Ash Ashbury Theology Seminary and was passed as a provision elder in the United Methodist Church. In her spare time, she likes to beat the family in the Uno and she likes to travel. And her favorite place to travel is to Dizzy and taking people to Israel and walking in the footsteps of Jesus. She is Associate Pastor of Discipleship for Christ United Methodist Church in Mobile. So let's give a welcome to Reverend Pat Bobby Lassiter. I am so excited to be here with you today. I'm thankful that um, I was asked to be able to come and to share a message with you. Um, it is special not just because Clay is your pastor, but also because my grandfather preached here way back when, and um, he was privileged to serve you for about two years. And so it's fun to be able to stand in the places where family and those that have gone before me have given the message that God has placed upon their hearts. Um, and thank you, Linda, for a great um, introduction. And um, we just played Uno again last night. We play every other night. And um, we have a championship belt. And I typically hold the title, um, but that's okay. Um, so today, and thank you, Mike. Where did you go? You just read the scripture. There you are. Thank you so much for reading beautifully our scripture today. Um, and so I just want to pray before we get started, and then we will jump on in. Is that okay with you? All right, let us go to God in prayer. Oh, gracious God. I thank you so much for this space that you have created and you have prepared for each and every one of us to step into today. We thank you for your presence that meets us here. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that is already actively at work and beginning to whisper within our ears, our hearts, and our souls. I thank you for the many hands and feet that have done all that they can to help you create this space. That God, the body of Christ, has been actively working, and God, it shows ever than before. I thank you for it takes many hands to be the body of Christ. And God, I pray right now that you quiet my own soul. And Lord, use me and guide me. And Lord, may it be only your words that are heard this morning. We love you. Amen. Now, I am used to walking around, um, and I'm not used to standing behind a pulpit. And I'm pretty sure he walks around a lot, too. So hopefully you're okay with that. 
Now, we are in a time, the season of Lent, and historically, Lent is a time of preparation for baptism. And baptismal candidates, they would spend this whole season in a time of preparation. They would learn all that they possibly can about what it means to be a disciple, what it means to be a follower of Christ. And then on Easter Sunday, the big day that they had been preparing for, the church would line them all up on the steps and they would begin to ask them to affirm and proclaim 12 different affirmations. 12 affirmations that just moments ago that you spoke and affirmed yourself um, when we said the affirmations of faith, the Apostles' Creed. Now, today, I actually just want to focus on the third affirmation of faith. When they talk about Jesus Christ and they declare that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he is the Lord of all lords. For that is one of the most powerful proclamations that we can say. They actually had to say at the end of every affirmation, we believe. We believe. And when they said these two small yet simple but very complex words, they weren't just saying that we believe that Jesus Christ came and that he roamed the earth. They were saying that Jesus Christ was more than we could ever imagine him to be. And they were making a proclamation in their life that he held the power to save each and every one of us. And that was because God's saving grace And saving power was within him. Now, over Lent, over the time, uh, Lent has become a time of preparation for us here and now. For us to do self-examination and for us to begin to see where we need to prepare our own hearts for Easter. Now, this morning, as we step into the word of God, we find ourselves in the midst of a story that challenges us here and now to examine our own faith, our faith in Jesus Christ. Now, throughout this Lenten journey that we find ourselves in the midst of, we must to discover what we believe and affirm about Jesus Christ himself. We must discover what we are proclaiming in our everyday life. We must acknowledge if we have found that saving power within him, God's saving power power. And we must discover if we are actively living it out in our everyday life. And in the midst of this self, ex, this self um, looking into examination, we must find that if we have allowed doubts and fears of the storms of life to take us over and keep us from fully proclaiming who God is in our lives. Now, As we step into this story, just before the storm that we find ourselves in the midst of, some of the disciples were actually witnesses to the power that Jesus held within him. And as he healed a paralytic man and healed the withered hands, that they got to see all that power come forth and and proclaim who God is in the world. And then after that, they were called one by one by Jesus. Jesus himself to come and be the 12 apostles. And then on top of that, they were granted the authority to cast out demons. Could you imagine? Could you imagine being one of those 12, being able to witness all that he had done, being able to sit there and to be present to his teachings, to the masses, and hear all of the parables that were just taught on that very day. And then Jesus didn't leave it alone, that he grabbed them and pulled them aside and began to explain further and further and answered any questions that they might have about the parables that he had just taught. Can you imagine? I can only imagine that I would be in awe, that I would be in complete awe and wouldn't even know what to do with it because here I just watched my teacher heal someone. Here I just watched my teacher call me out by name. Here I just watched my teacher give me authority to do what he had been doing. And then on top of that, he cared so much that he took us aside to make sure that we didn't miss out 
on a single moment. That's what we step into as we step into this story of God this morning. We step on that foundation of 12 disciples being able to experience all of that. What they have experienced is that they had come face to face with our Savior. They had come face to face with the person that the wind and the sea obey. Yet as we go farther along into the story of God today, we see that even though they have discovered this teacher, discovered this person that they can't even put words into being and don't even know how to explain themselves, that they are still, they are still have a little bit of doubt of the power that is held within him. They are still asking, who is this person that the sea and the wind even obeys? Out of nowhere, out of nowhere, their teacher falls asleep in the midst of one of the most powerful storms you could be a part of. The winds and the waves are howling so much that the waves are crashing over and it is beginning to capsize the boat for it tells us that water has already swamped the boat and they are in fear of their lives and they do not know what to do. And that one person that they have seen to be able to do all things and grant them authority to do the same things is fast asleep. Fast asleep. What is he doing? Doesn't he care? Doesn't he want to help us? Isn't he here to provide shelter for us? So they yell, teacher, teacher, don't you care that we are perishing? Well, there are shouts. There are shouts and demands. Wakes up their teacher and immediately Peace, be still. Peace, be still. He commands the winds and the waves to stop. And just like that, they do. And there's calm seas. But the teacher looks at them, the, the one that had just been fast asleep, and says, I can imagine. This is how I see it. This is not how the Bible sees it. I like to play it in my own head and in my own words, or maybe how I would have said it. But teacher looks at them and says, are you kidding me? Everything that you have just experienced with me, everything you have stepped alongside with me, and you're still asking me, one, if I care, and two, if I have the power to save you. Have you no faith? Have you no faith? The disciples then look at each other and I can't quite decide how that look really goes. And they're like, oh, crud, we should have realized. Or if they were just in complete awe and fear, for translations both say awe and fear. And they look around and they say, whom them is this person who has the power that the winds and the waves obey? Well, I love that Linda said a minute ago that one of my favorite, and I guess it was Clay because I guess he wrote up my introduction, but one of my favorite things to do is to go to the Holy Land and to be able to take other disciples and for them to be able to walk in the footsteps of Christ. And so my first trip to the Holy Land where I was one of their disciples, being able to step in the footsteps where Christ had been himself, where he had taught, where he had grown up, and where he had sailed the Sea of Galilee. I found my own self jokingly saying the same words that the disciples said as we were enduring a storm on the Sea of Galilee ourselves. Now, I can't decide if we were lucky that we got to experience this storm or else because it was not one that someone really wanted to be in the midst, in the middle of the sea um, on those small fishing boats for they are not that big. But I jokingly said, whom is this person that the sea and the wind obeys? Because 
The reason why I did was that our bishop, Bishop Graves, was actually at the helm of the boat. They had created um, a podium for him to, to give his devotion on. And we were already in the midst of a storm that seemed to come completely out of nowhere, where the winds and the waves were crazy. For if you didn't know, that the wind from Siberia, the wind from Siberia goes through the valleys and rushes over the Sea of Galilee and out. So it's like a wind you've never experienced before. And so the winds and the waves are crazy, and they have these vinyl, has anyone boats? Around here, does anyone have a boat? They have vinyl windows that you can zip up on it to protect us from the rain. There's no protection from the rain on the Sea of Galilee when the wind from Siberia comes along. It was pouring into the boat, and there's 130 of us like sardines scrunched into the boat, and everyone's sitting where you can find a seat, and there is at least 50 around the edge of the boat. And they are getting drenched. And we're all covering ourselves, trying our very best to stay as dry as possible. And our bishop is standing at the helm, preaching on this very devotion, not knowing that we were going to be in the midst of a storm ourselves. And he jokingly says, he says, Jesus, if you just had some kind of kindness to us today, would you still the waters and quiet the storm? Make the wind stop Please, wouldn't you know it? Moments later, honestly, probably about seven minutes, but moments later, the seas parted, not like this part, but the skies cleared, and the rain was completely gone. The rain was completely gone, and the skies were as beautiful as can be. The sun shone as bright as it ever did that day, and the birds came in droves and visited us as we sailed back to the shore. And by the time we got to the shore, you couldn't even tell that there had ever been a storm. Jokingly, the 130 of us that had experienced that As we were walking and getting off the boat, we looked at each other and said, Whom is this that the seas and the winds obey? Does our bishop have a special line to heaven and to God that none of us else have? Well, you see that we tend to, the things that we tend to say and believe, the things that we tend to even publicly proclaim. In the midst of self-examination, we tend to find that they're actually strong opinions and not unwavering faith. That in the midst of self-examination, we begin to see the doubts that still exist within the depths of our soul. The story that we step into today with the disciples on the Sea of Galilee in the midst of the one that can still calm the seas, the one that they have watched perform miracles and heard the teachings over and over again, the one that they had the most in-depth personal experience that anyone on earth had. In the midst of that storm and the capsizing waves, they realized that they were still a small, small part of doubt but lied within the depths of their souls. This Lenten journey, we are challenged to spend time in self-examination, to figure out that if what we say we believe, what we publicly proclaim, the 12 of affirmations that you as a body and I as myself stood and said with all that we had and all that we are, are they strong beliefs or are they unwavering faith? Now, 
John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement. I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, I say that jokingly because I say it in almost every single sermon that I talk about. Um, he, he's my, I, I want to say spirit animal. Do you know what that means? That I connect with him really well, okay? And one of the reasons why is because discipleship is at the core of him. He was the master of discipleship and creating disciples. And so much so that he created all these methods to make sure that he wasn't just creating another member of this new denomination that he was bringing out of, but he was helping create someone who actively lived out their faith. And so he had all these methods, which is why we're called Methodists. Um, and one of them was reaffirming our faith through the Apostles' Creed. And he also had small groups. He had accountability. He had all kinds of things in play because he had one fear that drove him. The fear that one day that all of this hard work all of this stuff that he was desperately trying to help others to become disciples would be at a wash. Because Methodists would then become too focused on faith rather than putting that faith into action. That they would be too focused on learning all that they can and staying with that learning and never putting it into action. In other words, he was so afraid that they would still find themselves on that boat saying, who then is this? That the wind and the sea obey. That they would have those personal experiences, but would never get to the point of have unwavering faith, that they would be standing on strong opinions and not unwavering faith. I tell you that his fear is one of my fears. It's also one of the reasons why discipleship is all that I am and all that I, God has created me to be is because I don't want anyone to continue to be on that boat in the midst of life storms, still asking the question, who is this person that calms the sea and the waves? I want them to be able to stand firm in their faith and trust and know that even when it looks like our teacher, our savior is fast asleep, that he is still saving us. Now this past year, we all know has been the hardest year. We are almost to the point of exactly a year when everything shut down. It was a storm that no one could even predict. No one knew what it would bring about. No one could ever imagine a storm this big that would shut down the entire world. A storm that, let's be honest, feels like it's been capsizing waves over and over and over again. And it still feels like those waves are still hitting us here today almost exactly a year later. And anyone from the outside looking in, it'd be easy to say that this is a storm that no one has seen and we all have the right to say, teacher, are you still asleep? Have you not come to save us? What are you doing? It's easy to say that in the midst of all that we have endured and continue to endure. But my question and my challenge for you is to begin to do that process of self-examination over this next several weeks of Lent. And I want you to begin to identify what has it been that you have been calling out. Are you joining the masses that say it's okay? It is okay at points, but where does your faith lie? That saying, teacher, are you still fast asleep? Or are you saying I have this unwavering faith that I proclaim boldly over and over again? And I know that my Savior has come to save me. 
And I know that the winds and the waves, they might be howling. And I know that the, the waves might be crashing over so much that it begins to look like we are all on our own. But I'm going to stand and boldly proclaim that I know who my Christ is. I know that he is the son of God and because he is the son of God, he's got the power of God within him and that is the power that comes to save. There have been moments where I have cried out, not teacher, are you asleep, but how long, oh Lord? How long, oh Lord? Have you? We can say how long, O oh Lord, but we can also stand and boldly proclaim that Jesus Christ has come to save us. And because of that, we have unwavering faith. So my challenge, something that I like to do at the end of all my messages, is for you to spend the next several days in deep prayer and asking the Holy Spirit to reveal upon you any doubts that might be, you might still be wrestling with, anything that might keep you from standing and boldly proclaiming this faith that you are actively living out. Because it's okay to have doubts. It's okay to have doubts. It's okay to have fears every once in a while. And even sometimes in those hard times, a lot. But unwavering faith, that means in those doubts, you still know who our Christ is. You still know who Jesus is. So at the end of Lent, as you gear up for Easter morning, Will you be able to stand with those baptismal candidates of ancient times and boldly proclaim who Jesus is in your life? Will you go to God with me? Oh, Father God, first of all, we thank you so much for loving us so very much that you sent down your son and Lord, you didn't leave us to our own devices. You didn't let us perish. But God, you sent saving grace in human form. And we get to stand on that foundation this morning and know that he is real and know the miracles he has done is real and know that the power that lies within him is the power that has come from you. And it has come for each and every one of us. Help us to stand upon that foundation as we search our own hearts to see where doubts may still lie and to see how we can boldly proclaim that you are the God of all gods. You are Lord of lords, King of kings. We love you. Amen. Would you stand with me for our closing hymn, Seek Ye First? Would you join me? going to get away without saying that at least once. Uh, would you receive this benediction? 
Well, good and gracious God, we give thanks to you. Thanks that we can have faith in the storm. So Lord, I send my brothers and sisters in Christ from this place to be a disciple, to make disciples, and to serve with love, and to feel and to receive your faith in the midst of the storm. Go now in the peace that God gives. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hear our prayer.